In today's video, we're going to be talking about deep vein thrombosis. So this is where we have the formation of a clot, which is otherwise known as a thrombus, within a deep vein, and it most commonly occurs in the leg. So we can see this diagram here on the right, which shows you a thrombus, which is in one of the veins of the legs. Now, the main factors which favor the formation of a thrombus or, or a clot are known as Virchow's triad. So these are three factors. The first one is venous stasis, so the slowing down of venous blood. This can occur in spinal cord injuries or prolonged bed rest. We have endothelial injury, so damage to the blood vessel wall. This can happen in surgery or some kind of trauma. And we have a hypercoagulable state, which can also occur in surgery and trauma, but can also happen in cases of malignancy. So there's some kind of tumor which is causing the hypercoagulability. Or it can happen in cases of disorders of hypercoagulation, and those can be inherited disorders or it can be acquired disorders. So when we talk about the pathophysiology of deep vein thrombosis, I've mentioned this in a previous video, but just to summarize it, we have some kind of damage to the endothelial wall of a blood vessel. We have platelets which aggregate to the site of the damage. The initial blood clot is formed with fibrin and platelets and red blood cells come and get trapped in the fibrin meshwork. Then we have this formation of the thrombus. Uh, it may also cause an inflammatory response, but it depends on the case. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And pieces of the thrombus may break off and travel in the bloodstream elsewhere in the body. And this is when we have an emboli formation. The signs and symptoms of deep vein thrombosis involve calf pain, because it's most commonly occurring in the legs. Uh, we can have swelling with a pitting edema, and I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. The skin around the legs can feel very hot. Uh, in cases of severe obstruction, we can have cyanosis, so the color of the skin will change. It'll look like purpley or bluey. And gangrene can also form as well. And two severe forms of deep vein thrombosis include phlegmasia albidolens and phlegmasia cerulea dolens. Phlegmasia albidolens only occurs in the deep veins and it is very painful and there's edema. And there can also be inflammation of the lymph vessels as well. So overall, there's a lot of edema and it is quite a painful condition. Phlegmasia cerulea dolens, uh, the thrombosis is not only in the deep veins, but in the collateral or the surrounding veins. So we have a lot of congestion, edema, and there's a lot of fluid retention. And the color, it looks something like this. So one of the ways to help you with your clinical examination to help diagnose deep vein thrombosis is the first one using Homan sign. So I've included this YouTube video here to help as an example. As you can see, the lady is lifting the patient's leg upwards and squeezing from the calf. Then she rotates the foot backwards in dorsiflexion. And if the patient experiences any pain in their calves, this is a positive sign for deep vein thrombosis. Another test is Moses sign, so this is where we squeeze the patient's calf from side to side and if they also experience pain, this is a positive sign for deep vein thrombosis. So we're also going to talk about Wells Prediction Guide. This is like a probability test to see if the patient does have uh, deep vein thrombosis, so it helps with the diagnosis as well as any differential diagnosis and uh, it takes into account a number of signs and symptoms. Each condition is given a score between one to three. So we have some examples here if the patient has active cancer um, or if they have a calf swelling or a pitting edema. Uh, each one is given a score and in total the scores are all calculated. So if the patient has a score greater than three, they have a high probability of having deep vein thrombosis. 1 to 2 is a moderate probability and 0 or less than 0 is a low probability. So finally, just to end the video, we're going to talk about how deep vein thrombosis is diagnosed. So you can use a clinical examination to make the diagnosis. So these include just checking the leg, checking all the symptoms, checking for discoloration, any pitting edema, any swellings, movement of the surrounding joints. You can also check for Homan sign or Moses sign. So these can help to evaluate and make your diagnosis, but you can't just use the clinical examination on its own to make the diagnosis. So you can also do some blood work as well, so you can check for D-dimer, 
which is basically a breakdown product of fibrin and people who have these kind of thromboembolytic diseases have higher levels of D-dimer. So this can be done using blood agglutination or the ELISA test, which is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So that's another method of diagnosis. You can also use imaging to help with the diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis. So things like venography used to be used, but it was quite an invasive technique, so it's not really used anymore. You can use basically an ultrasound, which is very commonly used because it's very cheap. It's easily available and it's not really invasive. However, it's harder to do in the pelvic regions or very small vessels in the calf and if there's a lot of edema it can make it difficult. So you can also use MRI scans as well to help with the diagnosis which is highly accurate and it's also used for the diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis.